All right, what's good everybody? Today I want to share some updates on the Newtonality Lab application uh, since the last time. What's changed, what's new, uh, what bugs have been fixed. And uh, first of all, I want to mention that it's received way more attention than I initially anticipated. I thought it will be almost like unnoticed because I was off like for two years or more uh, from the YouTube, but uh, almost like a next day, a savage did a live stream of the application, which I'm super grateful for. And uh, I get a lot of feedback. Uh, I understood a lot of things that I want to change in the application. And I also like realized that it's uh, quite interesting, not, all, uh, not only for me, but it's like in generally good idea to continue to develop the application. So this is what I'm planning to do. And this is one of uh, the like the many videos uh, upcoming that will just basically discuss what is happening uh, on that front. Another thing before we start with the video is that the channel changed the name from Objective Harmony to Newtonality. I think it's just generally speaking just a better name and this is some kind of a, like a brand that I want to use like whenever. Another thing is that I have uh, Twitter for Newtonality where you can follow updates on whatever I'm doing uh, much closer because making this like app update videos for every single small feature is a bit too time consuming so uh, it would be much easier for me just to post, you know, uh, a tweet that something has changed, this new feature added, and then combine all of that into more like uh, lengthy videos like this one. So make sure to check that uh, if you're interested. Also, some of you guys were asking about uh, how they can support that, so I will leave some links in the description. The most important stuff, of course, is that to use application in your own projects and your own music to talk about it, and leave you know feedback uh, here and on YouTube or on Twitter and uh, share the stuff that you do with me. Uh, the same thing actually Savage said in in the live stream. That is the, the the most interesting thing is that whatever the community will you know make with that. So just use it and share it, and uh, let's see if we can do something interesting here together. But now I think that's all. Let's get into the video. Okay, so the first thing, of course, uh, if you watched the previous video and used the step before, is that there is a little bit of new stuff in the UI, but that is something that I will talk later. And now I think the most important stuff is that I have entirely new additive synthesizer engine. So this beautiful class here, this is entirely new, that wasn't in previous version. In previous version, I was using a Tone.js library, which maybe I didn't use it quite well uh, or something, but it had a maximum of 32 partials that it could play at once, which wasn't that good. And now I speak to Web Audio API directly and I tested it. It seems like I don't have any limit, or any upper limit on number of partials, so like you definitely can have 1000. So I tested that, which is good. And also that comes with one of the benefits that uh, previously you had to always play and stop the synthesizer before you change any parameter, but now it's unnecessary. So you can just press play and just go crazy with all these params. Now that's actually, I think, makes using this application way more, uh, way better. One thing that I would like to change uh, in next releases of the app is that currently in the synthesizer, all the oscillators, all those sine waves, they have the same phase. They all start with zero phase, basically. And at some like set of params that can cause interesting effects that you may not want, like for example, something like this. All those do, do, do. all the stuff is that all those sine waves start at the same at about the same phase and then they kind of gradually go out of tune it would be better of course if we can just randomize the phase right away and get into the actual you know sound uh, but i just need a bit more time to figure that one out the good thing though is that now we have a new sample export engine which do allow us to export that with random phase right away. Same sound, let's just export it. First of all, what we see is that it processes much faster than before because now this, the export is offline, it's not online, it doesn't actually record 
the sound from oscillators, it just goes sample by sample and sums up all those sine waves. So I can save that. Uh, let me just open it in Audacity. Yes, and if I just play it, you will hear that there is no this strange effect going on anymore. Yeah, uh, that's nice. Um, another thing that you may notice that there is no silence in the beginning and that it's not as quiet. It's still a bit quiet. I probably will need to add a normalization, uh, you know, step after the export, like b before saving the WAV file. But that is something that is pretty quickly and I will like do it pretty soon, I think. So there won't be any problem with levels. Um, one another cool thing is that now it's a mono. It's not stereo uh, sample and that it is uncompressed wave file, I think 32-bit floating point precision. So there were some problems with export, like uh, some problems with importing that into some um, software. I don't think there should be any problem now, but if you do have any problems importing those samples, please just leave a comment, let me know somehow. Okay, let's talk about the last thing. Let's talk about new stuff in the UI that I've added. Um, one problem that I noticed from watching Savage livestream is that it may be not very clear which partials are harmonic, which are inharmonic. So what I decided to do is to plot spectrum from ratio to fundamental. So now, if you have integer ratio like 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., this is harmonic partial, right? So this is something very uh, easy to understand. And if we have something that is not, uh, yeah, like... Like, for example, you know, this one here, it has 5.123546 something. That means it's in harmonic partial. That is quite clear now. And another thing that allows us to do is to plot dissonance curve right there along the spectrum. So this dissonance curve is plotted not from sense, but from ratio to fundamental. So I just recalculate that. And... What I am able to do is to plot it like from minus one octave, like here, to plus one octave, like the same one that was here always from zero to uh, like 1200 hertz, and then octave number two, and like whatever the amount of octaves there are in calculation of our dissonance curve, basically. And I will talk about that a bit later and that the x-axis is logarithmic, so as you can see, all those octaves, you know, they have the same, like, pixel width. So it's very easy to compare them together. One thing that probably I need to mention is that uh, this green dissonance curve doesn't have the same precision as the blue one, so I think it has, like, 10 times less points, you know, for the same, like, um, interval. But when you export this out uh, by pressing download files, it will just take this green uh, curve and recalculate it with like full precision, so one point for every cent. And final thing to mention here is this section is new. So what is this about? Like for example, you can have now like 20 or like let's say 100 partials and uh, let's just do harmonic spectrum for ease of use. And if you recall previously, if you had that many partials, first of all, it take a long time to calculate dissonance curve, and then it looks like pretty strange. It's not very, you know, it's not very useful. So it's very hard to understand where are the like major minimums there. So what this max partials for calculations allow us to do is just to limit how many partials we want to have in calculation of dissonance curve. So if you press eight, it will, we will still have this like full spectrum that we can play, but uh, we will see the dissonance curve for the first eight partials only. And of course, we can just make it less like six or whatever num number you want, really. And also, it will affect how much octaves does uh, calculation of uh, this green curve take. So now it goes to the, I think, uh, ratio eight. But if we increase that, you know, a lot, as you can see, yeah, we have this additional stuff here. All right, so that was all with updates, what I currently have. Uh, 
for the application here. Uh, one more thing that I want to mention is that what I plan for the future. And first of all, what I want to really kind of focus myself on right now is change how the application looks. Because it doesn't look very good. It's not very attractive looking, first of all. And then packing more features here is a bit complex, I would say. I don't really know where like to get extra space to pack everything that I want. And then, of course, it's better you know, to make your UI good look first, like in the early stage, while it's not that much work than to do it like later. And this is something that I came up with, so it will be kind of this modular, synthy looking thing, you know, this kind of panels uh, for spectrum, for dissonance curve, for export, for all this kind of stuff that you can just expand. Uh, and the spectrum will look something along this line. It's not final, of course, I'm just kind of playing around with this. And one feature that I want to add here is that you can just use this kind of ghost, you know, uh, duplicate of your spectrum that you can just swipe through all the area to see that, for example, for this minimum of dissonance curve, these partials will get coincided. So just to kind of visualize how it all works and to also kind of just for more just educational purposes, I would guess, to explain people how it works, what is happening there, what is harmonics, you know, how it all interacts and how that all get into, you know, our perception of harmony. So I, I think this is, will be a very interesting feature. Um, but yeah, so the looks is number one priority, but then of course I want to add a lot more feature about how we just in general control spectrum. I saw some of the requests that people have, it'd be nice to have some, you know, um, like filters or something like, like that to kind of gradually roll off the frequencies, maybe a bit brighter, a bit darker. It would be also very nice to individually control each and every partial, like what frequency or what ratio does it have? What amplitude does it have? Um, but I think I will work on those stuff, but it feels like they want a lot more interface and therefore I want to have nice looks first and then uh, start pumping out those features. And then for the channel, I think I want to make like two videos. One of them is uh, how this Edo spectrums are calculated, so what is like, how do we get those specific frequencies, you know, like this uh, change here, like how we get this in, in harmonicity and why does that relate to our, like to the uh, equal temperament that we specify. Another problem and another request that I have from a lot of people is that currently you are unable to loop our samples that you download and it would be nice if we can make those loopable, but I I think it's actually impossible <laughs> to do and I will make a video why it is impossible and what we can do to maybe have those kind of sustained sounds that have infinite uh, su su sustain basically without any like extra motion in the sound maybe. If I can figure it out, we'll see. So those are the plans and I guess thank you for watching, follow on YouTube, follow on Twitter, check links in description, and see you next time.